Just a few short blocks down the hill from where we're at tonight is Thomas Mifflin Elementary School. And, uh, Thomas Mifflin Elementary School serves very much as a, a microcosm for the city school system as a whole. And in fact, um, the neighborhood very much serves as a microcosm for the city. Fairly diverse community um, that serves a, a population at the Mifflin School that about 85 to 90 percent of the students there are economically disadvantaged. Um, we see in the school we've got a great, beautiful building at Thomas Mifflin. Uh, we have wonderful teachers, great students, um, but they don't have a lot of the resources that they need um, at that school. And so what I want to talk about tonight is some of the ways that we can get resources um, into our, our school district in Philadelphia. Um, so I'm just going to click over this way, I think. There we go. Okay. So um, this is a, behind me is a, um, uh, a plaque that's on the um, side of Thomas Mifflin School. And as you can see, the foundation of every state is the education of its youth. Now, this wasn't said by uh, Thomas Mifflin. It wasn't said by FDR or Harry Truman. This was said by a Greek philosopher over 1,700 years ago. Now, today, you can look back at that quote and see how far have we come since then that today we still have issues with funding our public education system, both in our state, literally, and in our city. Now what's telling about this, uh, this plaque is that right now you can't actually see it from this, on the this side of the building. It's actually um, behind a fence because um, the area near the plaque is actually falling apart. Quite literally, the foundation of our school is falling apart, quite literally. We see at that school that the teachers opened up uh, this year, they didn't have copy paper. They didn't have one ream of copy paper for our students. We have a, they have a library, a uh, fairly new library, lots of books in, in the library, older books, but they have books in the library. But they don't have a librarian to actually open the library, so it remains closed most of the day. And when you look at what the issues are, um, why this exists, I want to show another image. Um, this is a bridge that might be familiar to some people. My wife calls this the Chipotle Bridge because it's the bridge that you take to get to Chipotle on City Line Avenue. But more our, our favorite fast casual Mexican restaurant. Uh, more importantly for this conversation though, it's the bridge that goes from, Montgomery, from Philadelphia County to Montgomery County and more importantly, from Philadelphia School District to the Lower Marion School District. And I just want to show how much funding is going into the classroom in each of those school districts. $6,676 in the Philadelphia School District, $13,095 in the Lower Marion School, school District. So twice as much going into the Lower Marion School District. Now, there's some, I want to say, easy solutions, but there are some solutions that we often hear talked about, uh, talked about um, in the public policy sphere, right? We, we always hear about a fair funding formula, getting more money from Harrisburg dispersed more evenly. But the truth of the matter is that in, uh, in Lower Marion uh, Township, um, they get about, so the 13000 is what's going to the classroom, they get about $28,000 um, all told, all in, including money for facilities, uh, money for uh, sports and, and arts education, about $28,000 going to, for, for each student um, in the Lower Marion School District. 89% of that doesn't come from the state, it actually comes from the local municipality. Now this is troubling, of course, Lower Marion has a, a higher net income by, for, for um, each resident. Uh, but it's troubling because what I've found, um, and I was actually, when I originally was asked to, to, to give this speech, um, I was planning on running, I was considering running for Philadelphia City Council. And one of the reasons that I decided that I wanted to, to uh, what I was considering doing it, was that uh, I often heard uh, in this public policy conversation, among many of our elected officials and among many big decision makers throughout the city is that Funding our education system isn't a Philadelphia problem, it's got to come from Harrisburg. That we basically have to outsource this problem to Harrisburg, that, that they should be giving us the funding. And to some extent I agree, we should be getting more money from our state capital, but there also needs to be more from our local government. And what I want to talk about is some ways that we can potentially do that without having to, to dig more into the taxpayers' pockets, right? And so uh, one of the frustrations that I saw is I, I talked to a member of city council. He told me it's, it's not Philadelphia's, it's not 
it's not for me to do. As a, this is a, a sitting member of city council. He doesn't have any, any say over it. And then recently I saw this from another elected official talking about, of course, we're coming up to the 2015 uh, mayoral and city council elections, and we had a politician who said, we're told again and again that education will be the issue of the 2015 mayoral campaign. It shouldn't be. This is uh, a, a current politician in Philadelphia. Well, I, I'll tell you, I couldn't disagree more. And so I want to talk, first of all, there's some low-hanging fruit. Um, I drew these apples myself in Microsoft Paint, so you can see I did not get a proper art education in my uh, very robust art education in my own life. But uh, I just want to talk quickly about some low-hanging fruit. We hear about these things often. I just want to tackle these quickly because these are, these are often some of the public policy solutions that we hear from some of our, our uh, city, city's politicians. There's pilots, which is basically um, getting um, large nonprofits to pay something into the tax system that can then go to public schools. They're selling assets. There was the recent debate around the PGW and possibly selling that to get more money for our school, school district. There's collecting back taxes, and then, of course, there's raising taxes. Now, some of this is not politically easy necessarily, but it doesn't involve a whole lot of uh, outside-of-the-box thinking. And so what I want to talk through today is just a couple of ideas, a couple of what I would call um, relatively easy ideas that wouldn't cost taxpayers much money off of uh, much more money than they're currently paying. So we're going to go uh, away from the low-hanging fruit and we're going to go into the weeds a little bit here. Um, the first thing is creating a nonprofit board. So I talked earlier about uh, the issues that we had at, at Thomas Mifflin School. Um, that we were opening the doors without any copy paper. We didn't have any art supplies. We didn't have any music education. And so what we did in, in our community, um, in, in the East Falls community, was we created the Friends of Mifflin School. And you're starting to see these evolve uh, throughout the entire city, is these Friends of groups that are, that are um, working to basically fund our local public education, our, our local public schools. And we did this with the idea that we don't want to tell our teachers and our administrators what playbook to run. We don't want to tell them how to do their job. What we simply want to do is to give them the resources to be able to do their job better. And so we raised, uh, we raised annually somewhere between five to $10,000 for the school, relatively small amount of money, but to those, to those teachers who can't afford to put copy paper uh, in the copier, it means a lot. It means a lot to them. And so what I, one of the ideas is that we could do this at, the, at a larger level, citywide. There is no nonprofit. We have the School Reform Commission, which basically does oversight of our school district, right? But we don't have a fundraising board that actually goes out and raises money for a lot of the programs that, that, that have been lacking in our schools recently. We have this in the Free Library of Philadelphia. We have this as the Fairmount Park Commission. They all have their oversight committees, but then we don't have a, they, they have created a nonprofit board that does additional fundraising for our school, for, for those organizations, and we could do the same for our schools. Next is to, is to make the PPA pay their fair share, the Philadelphia Parking Authority. So I think that many of you around, uh, around the room have gotten one of these before. You know it when you see it. That's a, that's a parking ticket. Uh, I got one earlier this week, so this is actually a recent copy. Uh, I, uh, when, um, around the same time, and for those of you, for those of you who remember, that in, in about 2001 or so, uh, it, it was when the school, school Reform Commission was created. Basically, it was Harrisburg taking over oversight um, of, the, uh, of the school district. Um, at the same time, they actually took over the Philadelphia Parking Authority, coincidentally. At the time the, uh, the parking authority was taken over, about 45 cents of every dollar um, collected was given back to the city of Philadelphia. Uh, right now, we're at about 30 cents on the dollar total. Uh, sorry, there we go. 30 cents on the dollar right now is coming, uh, is coming back to the city. So we used to be getting 45 cents on the dollar. That seems like a relatively small amount of money, right? 15 cents on the dollar. But when you add up a lot of those parking tickets, and I've gotten a lot in my life, so I, I, I know how they can add up. Uh, when you add up those parking tickets, last year alone, you'd be looking at about $33 million that should be coming back to, this, to the city that we used to be getting, that we no longer get. 
And so one of the things that we need to do is to hold the parking authority accountable, um, or you know, if not, and take it back as under city control when we used to be getting that 45 cents on a dollar. Coincidentally, that $33 million, if you remember, there was a, the, the last set of cuts um, in last budget cycle for the Philadelphia School District, the total cuts were $32 million. So we could have avoided that whole last set of cuts to the school district if we were getting that extra $33 million, that extra 15 cents from the Philadelphia Parking Authority. All right, finally, creating an education improvement district. So I talked before about, um, you know, this, this is a, a, a relatively diverse community that, for instance, the Mifflin catchment area, relatively diverse catchment area. Um, but there, there is some, some population with, with some wealth, wealth in this community. Um, what we saw in the 80s and 90s um, when Center City Philadelphia was looking to, to, uh, looking to revitalize itself, um, you started getting a number of businesses who really wanted to be able to invest more in really putting a lot of the services that uh, they felt they wanted to get in Center City uh, and they weren't able to get through, through traditional city services. Um, things like street cleanups, more public spaces, things like that. And so what a bunch of businesses did in Center City was they created um, the Center City District, what was called a business improvement district. Um, and what they effectively did was take a small percentage of, of extra taxes out of, out of uh, your business taxes, and that would then go towards this business improvement district, the Center City District, and that would then pay for those additional services. Now, when you ask many Philadelphians what more services, what other services do you want than what you're already getting, we have fairly reliable trash collection. There's a lot, a lot of the, the basic services that you, you want for out of your city. Snow gets plowed most of the time, right? Uh, you get most of the services that you want, but one of the things, if you were to poll most Philadelphians, and this has been done, if you poll most Philadelphians, one of the things that many Philadelphians are dissatisfied with is our education system. And so for the communities that want to be able to invest in their local public schools, we should give them the ability to do that by creating, much like the Center City District, or much like the Neighborhood Improvement Districts that are being created right now, is these educational improvement districts. And so if you were to look right, right behind me is a map of, of the catchment area that, that we're in right now. You see where, the, at the bottom there, you see Mifflin Elementary. You're at the, the uh, Red Star up there, right? If you were to pull from this community and say, we want to take a small additional fee um, out of, onto your residential, we want to add a small additional fee onto your residential tax rate, that could then go to fund your local public school, right? So you, you would, as a community, say, we want to invest more in our public school, and we want to give you the ability to do that. Then in addition to that, there's other money that's available. You know, some programs that, that a lot of, not a lot of people know about, for instance, the Educational Improvement Tax Credit that's available in Harrisburg. Um, this is primarily used um, to fund um, private education, but what we could look at is for certain catchment areas, actually being able to uh, pull together our resources and apply to get those tax credits that businesses have to be able to fund public schools in those, in, within that catchment area. You could apply for it in the very same way. So I don't think that um, in any way, um, anything that I proposed here is, is that revolutionary or um, is, is anything um, that's gonna necessarily turn the school district around 100% tomorrow. But what I do think is that um, we've been lacking. We've been lacking in a lot of, of ideas coming out of the school district and in fact, or rather from our city's leaders. Um, and in fact, I think that we need to expect more out of our city's leaders, right? I think that we need to expect um, more from our city's leaders and from ourselves to be able to invest in the foundation of our state and in our city. Thank you.